Welcome once again. Uh, this is John Schulman, 720 and 720. Uh, for the first time, we've kind of we're going to venture out of uh, basketball, the basketball world. Uh, we've got a we're very fortunate to have a great guest, Ken Duke. Ken Duke is a PGA golfer. Uh, he's been a PGA golfer. He's won five times on the either the PGA or Canadian or nationwide. He's made a lot of money. And he did not have an easy path. We're going to talk about it, how he overcame adversity. Welcome, Ken Duke. Welcome to 720 and 720. Yeah, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. How you doing? I'm wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Ken just got done. Ken, you just got done um, trying to qualify for the champions. That means two things. It means you're old and still playing good golf. Is that correct? And that, that sums it up. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, all right. Now, Ken and I go way back uh, – Ken showed up in, in Kansas, sitting right behind our bench when we were up 12 with uh, 17 to play at Kansas. Correct, Ken? I would not have missed it. I was the leading cheerleader. Um, and I tried to be the leading cheerleader for uh, young Ken Duke on the PGA Tour uh, at the Masters. Saw him make the shot to, to take a lot of money off VJ Singh on the 18th hole in Augusta. Uh, watched him, watched him at a lot of different places, but the greatest place was um, in Knoxville, Tennessee, when I caddied for Young Ken. And uh, Ken, give me my grade before we get started. Give me my grade as a caddy. Well, I mean, it's, we'll just have to have another show on that <laughs> the whole issue. But uh, no, it was a wonderful time. You know, it's a friendship that we have, and uh, it was a great time to be there. And obviously, a lot of people knew you instead of me. That's the problem. L listen, here's the problem. The problem was I was giving you yardage on the tenth hole, and we were playing number five. That's a problem. <laughs> That's the biggest problem of all. All right, Ken. Here's what. Here's what this is. This is a a podcast where we're trying to help people and and. I figured out that's kind of what I do best is try to help people. And um, your story is amazing. We want to really kind of go through your story um, and try to try to really go back to like the seventh grade. Tell us, besides playing on the tour for all those years and winning on the PGA Tour and making a lot of money and doing all those really neat things, tell us kind of some things that you kind of had to overcome because I don't think people really realize it. Yeah, I mean, and um, I won't try to keep it. You know, try to keep it short, but um, you know, I started out playing all sports back in, you know, as we all did, baseball, football, basketball, uh, golf really wasn't in the picture when I was younger. I just played all the, the major sports. My dad was a weekend golfer and obviously he introduced it to me, but when I was in the seventh grade, um, we had medical checkups and I was just, you know, we we're playing football at the time and just got diagnosed with scoliosis, which is a curvature of your spine. Uh, my spine was uh, probably a little more curved than than other people, so but the doctors wanted me to you know go forward and check out things. And as I was growing at that age, 13, 14 years old, you know, obviously it kept curving, kept curving. So um, February of when I was of 1985, um, my curve was getting really, really bad at 72 degrees. So my doctor said I had to have surgery. So uh, eighth grader, you know having surgery a major surgery with putting a 16 inch rod in your back you know you didn't know what to expect first of all you just want your life you want to be able to walk you know normally uh playing other sports never even thought about it uh, obviously the, the curve was cutting into my lungs and it was cutting off my breathing so that's the reason we had to have surgery uh, to, to take that pressure off your lungs so so now um to this day my back is a 38 degree curve you know, back then they didn't really take the whole curve out. They just, you know, pieced the rod in there to to make it stable. Now the technology is so good that they they put two rods in and take the curve out. You know, sometimes it's a S curve, which is a curve at the top and curve at the bottom, but mine was just more of a C curve, just more at the top. So, um, so as we went forward, you know, I started playing golf and. And play with but the back breaks on, be honest with you, when I was in high school, 10th grader, 11th grader, 12th grader, you know, so um, just kept going forward and golf just gotten bigger. The other sports were out just because I just wanted to focus more on, you know, more of an individual sport and, you know, couldn't do the the, the hitting and everything for football and the basketball, the conditioning, I just couldn't do it. With, with the, do you still got you still got the same i the same rod in your back right now that you that they put in back in the day yes it is it's a harrington rod but they don't use the harrington anymore they use another rod 
uh, another company, obviously, but uh, it's still it's 38 degrees. Whenever I left there in 1985, it's still the same. So that's uh, that's the amazing part that I haven't really had any problems with my back, which is is crazy because now since I've been out on the PGA Tour for the last 11, 12 years, I do a lot of hospital visits and see other kids that has this situation, and and you can tell that some of them won't get out of a, out of a wheelchair because of their condition is so bad. But a lot of times they've had multiple surgeries, and I only had one surgery because a lot of the hardware that they put in these other kids or some other kids, it, their, their body would reject them. So they'd have much more surgeries, and I got lucky, you know, to have the one. But uh, to this day, my doctor is still, you know, you know still practicing and uh, still talk to him. It's a pretty amazing story. Well, as you overcome that, I mean, you're overcoming that in eighth grade. Uh, I mean, so you're just in survival at that moment. Why on earth, why on earth, it, it, you know, and that's why I want to kind of get in your head this morning. First of all, why on earth, because I had that saying, I had a dream being a Division One basketball coach when I was in eighth grade. When did you start realizing and, and thinking, hey, man, I, I want to be, I want to be, play on the PGA Tour. I mean, you, well, you got a rod in your back. There's no way you can be thinking that at that moment. No, it, I mean, I I grew up with hardly nothing, so we didn't have lessons. We grew up on a nine-hole golf course, so, you know, getting the teaching that you need or getting the experience you need to the bigger golf courses, tougher golf courses, the competitivity, is, you know, just wasn't uh, it wasn't access to me. So um, I think more in, the, like, the 12th grade, I got, you know, I got better, and, and obviously a freshman in college is at Henderson State University is where uh, kind of, you know, like, let's just try to give this a shot. But I still had a lot of work to do. You know, I had a wonderful, you know, freshman career, but the problem was, you know, there's always somebody out there a lot better or even more people out there better, but you still had to work hard and hard to get where you where you want to go. But uh, I know, but you're playing. So, so you go to Henderson State Division Two, which uh, we'll talk about sometime, what, what, what you've done for that golf program right now for, for Bucks, for Birdie and, and your – uh, foundation what you're doing is amazing but you're you're a freshman at henderson state division two do you have pga aspirations at that time i mean what 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 are you thinking about in your head i'm thinking about first of all making the team which i did <laughs> i was the only freshman on the team everybody else was senior and i was a freshman but but really i was really more just you know i wanted to finish college because you think i'm going to go professional with this situation in my back with no chance you know just no, I never even thought about that. But as the years gone on, you know, a couple of years later, junior, you know, or so, it's kind of when I'm like, you know, I might can give this a shot. You know, I still had nothing. I didn't really have any money to go out there. But um, the main thing, I, I had my life now. I had, um, I didn't, I didn't have to worry about my back. I still had to do exercises to strengthen it because it was weak. So, you know, I never even thought about playing professional golf prior to then. And you know, I just got got a lot better. But I mean. I can't tell you, and you probably, I probably, you probably do know of how much I've worked to get to that point, and it doesn't just come overnight. You don't, you don't just get up and you know you're a professional. It's, it's you know hitting balls before five a.m. to seven before you got class at eight, and hitting balls at night at eleven o'clock at night when you get off work. And I mean, it's that was day in day out. It, that's just we had to work as uh, you know my family and to to make ends meet, and that's just the way it is. But um, well, yeah, it's just I a think, lot of a lot of hard work. I, I just think that only the special and the elite have that mindset, and and you you've got the mindset. You know, I mean, I watch you out there with Tiger and Phil, and and I'm going, you know, first of all, I'm like, I I know that guy, man. He's a buddy. I mean, so like, I mean, you were a hero besides being a great friend. You, I I was, I mean, in awe of what you were doing out there. But but to overcome what you what you did with your injury. I, I can't believe you even were thinking of that and could do that, and you did that. And so, I, I you know, your mindset, you know, trying to help others right now, uh, trying to realize their dream. Very few people get to do what you did, and very few, very few coaches get to do what I did. Give them, give them a player or a coach an idea on, you know, what was in your mind and how you, how you accomplish that. Well, you never can get ahead of yourself. You never can take anything for granted. You have to live in the moment and enjoy it more than any. Um, sure, you can't get starstruck with who you're with or you know, who you're hitting by or who you're setting by or who's in the field. 
you play your game, you have to play, you can't play their game. And that's the more you get comfortable with that, the more you can get you know, more confidence. And that's what it is. It's about consistency. It's not about, you know, I can do this, I can do that, but it's about how consistent you can make that same swing and how much confidence you can gain from every single swing to be that consistent. And there's nothing fancy about my game. There's nothing fancy about, you know, maybe say a Jerry Kelly, which some people don't even know who that is, but he's made probably $30 million on the tour. But everybody knows about Dustin Johnson, Tiger Woods, all those kind of guys because they hit it long. They have the flair. They have everyone with them. But it's about consistency. And obviously, you know, Tigers put the work in to be consistent as well. But that's what it's all about. It's a it's the consistency and the confidence that you can build for your game, not for somebody else's game that you watch on TV. Well, we uh, Alan Stein. We did a podcast with Alan Stein. Alan Stein we work with your boy KD and Steph, and and he said you cannot get bored with the basics. And he said the the best players in the world are the ones that don't get bored with the basics. And so I'm assuming you know when I when I was a great caddy for you, phenomenal caddy for you. <laughs> uh, when I cleaned your clubs, I guess you know I watched you guys on that driving range. And you had pro after pro after pro out there working on the basics. So I'm assuming it's the same thing in golf, correct or incorrect? No question. You know, a lot of a lot of it's just the, the chips that you, the little 50 to 80 yard chips you hit on the range, not just hit the drives 300 yards. It's about the fundamentals of getting that club face squared impact every single time, not every other time. It's about every single time. And those short shots and the basic stuff, is uh, that's how you get it done. Well, I remember I told you, I was like, I, I remember this one. I said, Ken, we, we've got, you've got 126. You got 126 to the hole. And, and you looked at me and went, all right, I'm going to hit this about 122. And you meant it. And, and I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, I mean, the rest of us can't do that. We're just trying to hit it on the green. And you're saying you want to hit that thing 122. You don't want to hit that 126. So, so the, the basics are still the golf. And, and I would say in everything, business and and coaching and basketball and baseball, you cannot get bored with the basics. And and I'm assuming that's what you guys did time and time again. No question. It pays off, you know, and it may not, you may not see the results that next day or that day, but you may see it the next week. And that's what it's all about. It's uh, just working on the simple things more than the more difficult things. I, I think you can help us with this. All right. So, so as a coach and you kind of live my life as I was living your life, uh, you'd lose a tough one. We'd lose one at the buzzer. And, and I had a tough time getting over that. And, and I had a tough time getting over it. And I could turn one loss into two very quickly. Uh, you know, I always and asked you this. Uh, missing a four-foot putt with a million dollars on the line or missing a four-foot putt to miss a cut or a chip. or How did you overcome that? Because coaches have a tough time overcoming uh, what we mess up with, and and we can make things worse. How do you not make things worse after you three putt the fourteenth hole and you got five to play and you got to get you got to get that stroke back? Yeah, it's very difficult. I mean, obviously you think you should everything should happen perfectly, but it just doesn't do that. And I've always thought you got to be a better loser loser than you are a winner because you're going to lose more than you're going to win most of the time, especially in, in golf. You know, you don't win every single time or every other time unless you're a tiger or somebody. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it, you just have to, you know, you really got to have fun more than any. You have to, you know, you have to shrug it off and, you know, just work a little bit harder or, or what watch was, a movie and forget about it or something like that. But what was your mindset while, while you are doing it? It's, it's almost, okay – missing a free throw i've missed two in a row and you missed two you missed two eight footers in a row for par or for birdies how do you get through that how do you get through that and and put that behind you as fast as you can most of most of the time and i'm just speaking of myself and maybe some other guys when you do that you're 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 hurrying you're trying to make something happen instead of just let it happen and for me i either i either you know walk a little bit slower or change my routine a little bit just to take the club back a little slower, like a putt or a hit or whatever, because um, most of the time you're you're wanting to get in there quickly because it's 
you think it's easy and you just want to go and go, go, go. And that's most of the time you mess up whenever you get ahead of yourself, you know, not a distant golf and everything else as well. So you're just changing your routine, changing your Change mindset, routine, changing slowing routine. everything down because when you're playing good, you want to keep going, you want to keep going. And, but you got to, you got to do something different to slow everything down to kind of stay in where you are instead of, you know, rushing because then you got extra time and you got to wait around and waiting on somebody else or whatever. But you have to slow everything down to get back into that moment. All right, go back. Last part. Go back. You lost your card, uh, and then you regain your card, uh, and then you go up. You're up in Connecticut. Uh, you're in Connecticut, and and you win your first event after you've overcome back surgery and a rod in your back and playing Division Two. You know, my our, our oldest is playing Division Two basketball, and and having that having that dream, playing Division Two golf, and having that dream, and making it, and um, how you overcome all those obstacles and then uh, your opponent chips in a, a, a prayer on the on the 18th hole to put you in a playoff, take you back to that moment right there. Because I think that moment can help players and coaches have to deal with all the stuff that we've overcome and now you've got your break to win it and now another obstacle pops in your way. Yeah, I mean, you, you... – long story you got to get back you got to get yourself in the position to win and obviously i did and you always got to think somebody's gonna you know tie you or beat you or whatever but when that happened you know when when the guy chipped in on me on the last hole and you know it tied so now we have to go in sudden death or playoff um now i just went back to the my main thing was calm down a little bit you know that you think that you have it before this chip goes in, but then it goes in. Now you're like, oh boy, here we go again. So the main thing for me was let's just let's just get off this high right now. I mean, we've got a 50-50 chance here to win, but let's just make some good solid swings and be confident with every single swing that I made, and and don't rush it. You don't, you know, this is this is you can get away with it when you're playing eight, you know 18 holes, but this is one hole or 72 holes. You can get away with it, but you have to be focused on every single shot, and you should do that every time. But, you know, when you're playing so many holes, you get away from it. But I was ready. It was uh, – I felt like it was my turn. Uh, I put the work in. Um, you know, up in Yukon country, you don't want to hear the name Duke because that was another incentive <laughs> for me as well. That I heard it a lot of times. I kid Ray Allen all the time about it when I see him. But it's um, – I was ready for it. It was, it was my time to – to do what I had to do. And, and, you know, like I said, I put the time in to do it. And uh, now you just got to pull off the shots. And uh, luckily it came out my way. Uh, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, we talked to a, a coach about not being too high and, and not getting too low and, and trying to live in the neutral. And, and uh, w- what's your thought about that? Because, you know, I mean, you know me, I, I was either on top or on uh, top of the world on the bottom. Uh, right. but he tried to stay in neutral and I think you try to stay in neutral an awful lot with emotionally trying to stay in neutral. That's huge coach. That's, that's, I think that's a good word neutral because there's so, there's so much that you can get so high on and get so ahead of yourself. Like if you're five or six under par and the next thing you know, I, I've got some easy holes come coming ahead. I can get a couple more under par, but what happens there is you get way ahead of yourself. But if you stay into that, like you would say neutral, it's huge. But for me, that's that's kind of where I've been over my career the last few years. Uh, early in my career, I was go, 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 go. You know, I was ready, ready, ready. But you have to you know, tone that back a little bit and get into that area that you're more comfortable and, and believe that you can belong and believe that you're going to hit a good shot and everyone with you knows you're going to hit a good shot. And, um, it's just you're staying calm. Sure, you can get excited here and there, but got to come off of that and uh, get back in to be ready to go for the next shot well hopefully everybody can understand after listening to this is i mean back to the basics and stay with the basics and you really uh you know o- overcoming obstacles is, is is part of it not many people are on the tour with with a rod in their back as you were uh, but but hopefully people can understand and and i don't know you know I, I, everybody always questions me how do you live your life um, having to deal with with twenty year old kids, nineteen and twenty year old kids, winning and losing basketball games for you. You know, how do you live your life having to make an eight footer 
to to either make a, a, your house payment or not. You know, how do you, how did you know how do most guys on the tour handle all that? Yeah, you know, some of them do, some of them don't. <laughs> that's that's uh, and that separate it, it separates. So, but your mental capacity and it's your mental, mental toughness is because everybody can hit a ball. I walk out there on that on that driving range. Everybody hits that ball. And, right. and, but who's tough enough to make, uh, you know, you had a three foot downhill putt for what, 1.2 million and, and a two year exemption on the PJ tour, you know, as you're standing over that putt, as I'm watching it on TV in Chattanooga about to freak out, tell me what's going through your brain at that moment. Well, you are the only one. My teacher, Bob Tossie, said he walked out of the room because he couldn't watch. He was scared to death. Well, I had already this. called you and, and congratulated you 30 <laughs> minutes earlier, and I and I had to call you back and apologize on that same voicemail that after you didn't win it in re, in regulation. But yeah. So t- tell me what you're thinking about at that moment. Well, it, it goes back when, we, when I was you know, a sixth grader, seventh grader, eighth grader, ninth grader, back when we used to go to the – to the country club my parents would drop us off we'd go to the pool we'd go to the putting green and and some of my friends four of my friends we would putt for championships you know and you know i was this guy i was that guy and that kind of stuff so it kind of goes back to that here's my chance if i was a ninth grader or a seventh <laughs> grader or or 44 year old guy trying to make this for this championship it wasn't for a major but it was for a win and just goes back to the basics like you were talking about that it's uh you put the time in you know you, you've you made these putts thousands of times and there's no no different you know calm yourself down just get over the putt and knock it in and don't even think much more about it but it goes back to those old days when i was a kid that you know you dream about it and uh the dream come true for me well it's a game it was a dream come true i was more emotional uh, I, I, I remember when you called me. I'm at the gas station, and I, I was so I was so emotional watching you win. And that's fun when you when you have that kind of friendship, and you get a chance to watch a buddy live their dream. And you got a chance to watch me live my dream, and I appreciate it. We got a chance actually to watch Michael Mathis live his dream by getting Steph Curry's autograph with a ballpoint pen in in Oakland, correct? It's all, it's all about help, helping other people. You know that. Yeah, but, I mean, Mathis, he didn't act <laughs> like he had been there with Curry, did he? He's I, a little star. He's a little star stuck, I mean, but, you know. but watching him, you remember that night, watching him uh, just be a normal kid, uh, talk yeah. about the good old days of Davidson and Chattanooga was, you know, I mean, what he's gone through. He If he doesn't stay in neutral, he's got no prayer. No chance. No, but that's that's how – that makes a difference. That, that uh, separates, uh, you know, the, the guys that can and the guys that can't. And the guys that can will go a long way in a long time for a long time and uh, make a difference for sure. Well, Ken, we appreciate your time this morning. You're a PGA guy. We'll be continuing to root for you as you make the transition to the Champions Tour. You're going to make a lot of money. And if you ever need a caddy, remember, do not call me. I will be outside the ropes. I thought I could handle for all you people that think y'all can caddy and that you know the game of golf. Uh, we actually know nothing about it. And uh, I screwed my boy up so bad that uh, I remember after the round, you, you said, man, that was a great time. I didn't help you a lot, but we'll do it again. And my first answer was absolutely not. I will be on the outside of the ropes watching you and cheering for you. But we appreciate your time this morning, and, and thanks for kind of giving us what's been in your head. And, and uh, we are in awe of you overcoming adversity and, and playing on the tour and, and living your dream. Yeah, it's been a special ride for me, and uh, it's an honor to know you, Coach, and, and all you do for everyone. And it's just been fun to be out there and looking forward to going to the next chapter on the Champions Tour and see what we can do out there. We'll be watching. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Coach.